I was saying that the Committee of Liberty, Justice, and Home Affairs happens to be the number one committee when it comes to lawmaking, for good reason, because it deals with a variety of relevant competences that once were the sole competence of member states, but ever since the Lisbon Treaty entered into force with the Charter of Fundamental Rights, are now on board and for good competences shared by the European Union and the member states, including migration policy making and lawmaking, including asylum policy making and lawmaking, and including legislation on fundamental rights, which are enshrined by the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. So you will not be surprised if I tell you that ever since the Lisbon Treaty entered into force, that 10 years now, we have done our part of the job. We have put in place migration legislation, a so-called migration package. We have put in place asylum legislation, a so-called asylum package, summing up to a so-called European system of common asylum, a European common asylum system. And that is why we're here, because we care about the proper implementation and full respect to the European legislation, which is already in place, which is already effective. So you will not be surprised. We care about fundamental rights, which are meant to protect not only European citizens, but also every human being when EU law is applied or implemented, including, of course, migrants and asylum seekers. So you will not be surprised that we have made a point about the relevant articles of the Charter when it comes to migration and asylum. And yes, we have talked about the right to asylum, which is implemented by a full asylum package, which is European legislated law, which is effective and enforced. And of course, you won't be surprised if we have put emphasis in Article 19 of the Charter, which forbids collective expulsions, thus forbids the so-called pushbacks, which are much of the concern of the committee I have the honor to chair, and uh, which has sent this European Parliament delegation consisting of all of the relevant leading personalities of the LIBE committee, which have individual responsibilities in the relevant files of what is called the new Migration and Asylum Pact. I wanted to emphasize that there won't be a pact until the European Parliament make it its own. But for that to happen, we got to do better. So the second point I wanted to highlight before you and before Minister Matarakis, who invited us today for an open conversation, a frank conversation, is that we are not here to help Greece to do better. We are here to make sure that the European Union does better, improve its delivery here in Greece and elsewhere, particularly in external borders of the European Union, particularly in those member states who, who have those, what we call, vulnerable external borders of the European Union. And believe me, I know what I'm talking about because I'm a Canarian myself, and some of my colleagues also come from countries with vulnerable external borders of the European Union. And we're well aware that, yes, Greece happens to have a most vulnerable external border, 2,000 islands patrolled regularly by the Hellenic Coast Guard, whose testimony we heard just this morning. So we are here to make sure that the European Union does better, improves its delivery. And if we are to put in place new legislation, the so-called Migration and Asylum Pact, it has to be precisely to fill the gap of solidarity, which is the binding principle of the whole European common asylum system, which has been missing for all too long here in Greece to begin with. Missing solidarity from the European Union, missing solidarity from all too many member states turning a blind eye on the pressure that has been put on Greece by the current status quo. It has to be reviewed, the Dublin regulation, which sets the principle that is the country with external border, the one dealing with the whole thing until a final decision is made. And it has to be, of course, an emphasis on making sure that solidarity is implemented by actual relocations, which alleviates the pressure upon Greek authorities when dealing with the human dimension, 
of those who are entitled to stay in the European Union, not to be returned, but to stay, because they are granted some sort of asylum status or humanitarian protection, subsidiary protection, we call it in technical terms, according to EU law. And the third point I wanted to make before you is that making sure that EU law is respected is also making sure that it's properly implemented with full respect to the legislation at site. That is why we would like to see the European Commission doing better by monitoring the way all those operations are implemented and are carried out, particularly those search and rescue operations. Of course, we recognize the effort of those authorities in the field of those countries with external borders, as it is notably the case of Greece with the Hellenic Coast Guard, we heard this morning, with the support of Frontex. But caring about fundamental rights, caring about dignity, human dignity, which is to be respected fully in every situation in which a human being is dealt with by relevant authorities of every member state, not only Greece, every member state, wherever the situation, fundamental rights, fundamental dignity of every human being, according to the Charter, must be fully respected. And that is precisely what we ask for the Commission to do better. The Commission to ensure that there is full cooperation with the authorities of the member states in order to monitor that the current state of the play of the European legislation is properly implemented and fully respected. So, uh, final, final conclusion. We want to do better by solidarity, by relocations, by resettlements. And that takes, of course, an external dimension, which also takes a better Europe to improve its global relevance, dealing with unruly neighbors at sight. We have unruly neighbors at sight at the European Union. We have Turkey, lots of troubles to relate with. We had Belarus in the north, we had Morocco in the south. We have to deal with them strategically at the European level. And that also means that we have to have a European response, a common European response to certain situations that are coming up, including Afghans, which are not to be returned by no means, not in this situation, not after the abrupt Taliban tyranny came back to power. I heard the minister saying, I would gladly give thousands, thousands, thousands of humanitarian visas of Afghans coming to Greece if there would be solidarity from the rest of the European Union when we talk about those who are not that entitled as the Afghans are to be granted protection at a European Union level sort of response. And I do agree. So I wanted to just to reassure you that our work here is to take uh, notice of the state of the play, of the state of the art, hearing directly from the interlocutors, relevant interlocutors that we have come across for the last three days in very intense agenda, and making sure that it is something to be learned so that we make better laws, better EU legislation, better EU response, making sure that this time we make it right to keep the, stri the, the, the right balance between shared responsibility and solidarity, effective solidarity of all the member states, particularly the ones who are in a dire situation facing, facing challenging live uh, uh, dramas, rescuing people at seas, as, 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 as uh, Greek has, has been doing for years now in, in conditions that, of course, are much of our concern. Now, that, that's a message I would like to share with you. We will hear from the minister. <laughs> minister Mitaraki. Thank you, President Aguilar. Thank you so much for coming to Athens. It is with pleasure that we welcome the members of the European Parliament's Libe Committee to discuss the vast improvements in migration and asylum management in Greece in the first two years of the current government. The signs of change are visible. The Aegean Islands, which have shouldered a great burden, have now been decongested. We're reducing and at the same time upgrading our reception spaces. 
the goal is safe and dignified living conditions. Unaccompanied minors no longer are held in custody in police stations. That's no longer allowed in Greece. Nor are in overcrowded camps, but they are in appropriate shelters. The asylum backlog and waiting times have been driven down through fair and swift examination of applications. But the migration crisis is still here for Europe. We have seen efforts to weaponize migration in many fronts, most recently and notably in Belar by Belarus. And that means Europe has the obligation to improve its border security. We have enhanced border security in Greece in full respect with fundamental rights and international and European law. And that has led to the protection of human lives as we no longer have people drowning in the Aegean Sea. Of course, as President Aguilar alluded, there will always be room for improvements. The feedback by Libe is important in this respect. We all need to do better. We need to maintain a constructive dialogue above, where possible, ideological divides between member states and the European Parliament, as well as our neighboring countries. Migration affects the whole of the European Union, affects our neighborhood. So we all need to work together to mitigate the problem. The heart of the matter now is how the European Union as a whole can manage migration, and not only the frontline states. The Med-5 countries who have united to say that we can no longer alone handle such a big crisis. And we believe the European Union can do much more in three fronts before the new pact. First of all, by strengthening the external dimension, working better with countries of origin and countries of transit. Secondly, by enhancing the protection of our common external European borders. And thirdly, creating more common return mechanism and strategies. Because it's important to distinguish between those in need of international protection according to the Geneva Convention and the European Acquis from those coming irregularly into the European Union. And for the latter, we should provide legal pathways, but we should not allow the smugglers to choose who comes and lives in the European Union. And then, when we look at the pact, we need to achieve two critical goals. First of all, ensure that the pact helps Europe mitigate the number of irregular arrivals to the European Union, reduce the pressure to Europe as a whole, and then provide tangible, specific, and effective solidarity to frontline member states. And this cannot be achieved from mechanisms other than the relocation of those entitled to international protection. We're talking about European values. We talk about European institutions and European regulations. But then again, when we recognize somebody as entitled to international protection, we talk about national responsibility. These two don't add up together. When we talk about European values and European regulations, we need to talk about a common European protection space where the pressure of migration is heard throughout the continent and the members of the European Union. And the Council and Parliament should work together in this direction. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. We'll turn now for two questions. We'll first take questions from uh, here, from uh, those physically present, uh, because it's only fair. Uh, please, before you put your question, uh, please state your name and the medium you represent and whether you address to one of the two in particular your question. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Tony Rigopoulos. I'm a journalist from Documento newspaper and uh, Kuti Pandora's website. So, um, uh, Mr. Aguilar, uh, Greece has been receiving dozens of accusations about illegally pushing back migrants towards Turkish waters. Some of the leading world media have reported on this very recently. Uh, the German uh, newspaper Der Spiegel uh, actually published videos that could be proof that Greek authorities may have been transporting to sea and abandoning uh, migrants who have managed to reach uh, the Greek uh, land. Uh, so Mrs. Il 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 Ilva Johansson also said that she was concerned that this report may be evidence of misuse of EU funds. And uh, some months ago, Greece was also denied funding of its Coast Guard uh, due to those allegations. Now, until now, Minister Mitarakis has been refuting all those accusations 
but not once has the government ordered an official investigation. So my question, Mr. Aguilar, is if you have requested from the minister to investigate, and after your, uh, your visit here, do you believe that malpractices have been taking place in the AGN? And of course, to Mr. Mitarakis, uh, if you will order an investigation into the, onto those accusations, or if you still stuck, stick by your uh, comments that it's Turkish propaganda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, that we should take all the questions in the room and then, because the time is pressing, uh, our chairman needs to fly off, so let's try to make it speedy. Any other question? No. Chairman. Thank you for your question, for sure. In every talk we've had in these past three days, there has been an emphasis on full compliance with the full package of EU law, including the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. That means an emphasis, permanent, recurrent, in every conversation, on the concern that has been aroused in every level of the EU institutions, including, of course, the European Parliament, about alleged pushbacks. We have heard that formula time and again. And we don't want the simple, silent answer, well, we are still investigating, which is the usual answer we receive from Frontex, which has been put under pressure with a special scrutiny group that has been set in motion by the committee I chair precisely on good grounds because we've got to make sure that we have part of our job done by updating the regulation of Frontex. We have enhanced and increased massively the resources at the disposal of Frontex, but we, of course, we strongly demand and request from Frontex to be at the height of its full compliance of the mandate, including the fundamental rights deployment mandate, agents, incorporation of agents, and full investigation of every episode of malpractice or violation of fundamental rights or pushbacks, which I said at the beginning are simply deemed to be illegal according to EU law. We have a rule of law within the European Union we care much for. And that includes, of course, concern about the status of the play of rule of law within the member states of the European Union. That is why we put in motion also a so-called EU rule of law framework, which examines regularly, objectively, and in general terms, all of the 27 member states, including mine, including yours, all of the 27 member states. And one of the principles of the rule of law is precisely independence of judiciary and the strength of the public prosecutor's office to act whenever there's an allegation, let alone say evidence, of a violation of fundamental rights. So it's not only to the ministry to investigate. It is also a matter of whomever has account or evidence of a violation of fundamental rights to go directly to the public prosecutor or to go directly to the judicial office, to go directly to the judicial authorities and to start on its own an investigation, because that's also full compliance with rule of law. I mean, in, 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 the, in, in the European idea of what rule of law is about, we're not dependent of ministerial investigations to ascertain that rule of law is fully complied. We can count on independent judicial authorities to investigate whatever there's a violation of fundamental rights. So we, we, you, you can be certain that we care about it. We care about it. And of course, whenever there is an allegation or a or an evidence, as you have, the way you have put it, there should be full involvement of the European authorities, precisely because we have also, as you know, put in place the so-called rule of law conditionality, precisely to make sure that access to budgeting and EU funds is consistent with full of law, uh, rule of law compliance. And the final point I wanted to make in that regard is that we have seen improvement in Greece for sure, for sure. We were very much concerned about the pressure that has, had been put on Greece in 2015, in a moment in which Greece was taking the blow of the austerity policies, which were abject, which are ominous and obnoxious, and rejected by many of us in the European Parliament, and with diminished capacities, with diminished assets, particularly to the Hellenic Coast Guard, was compelled to patrol, to care, and of course to comply with EU law the situation was completely unfair by then, and we saw human drama, very much troubling. But we have seen improvement. We have gone through certain facilities.
these past few days, and we have seen improvement. But we have also seen situations that are to be cared for and uh, have to be denounced. We also saw situations that have been in the conversation with the minister, particularly when we visited Petru Rally, which was much, much concerning for, for, for this delegation of the European Parliament. And we have talked of it with the, with the minister, frankly. But having said this, we have seen improvement, and we want more improvement. We're not putting the emphasis here on the improvement which is to be delivered by the Greek authorities. That's our duty, not ours. Ours is the improvement by the EU involvement, the EU commitment, EU institutions, EU policy and lawmaking. EU Commission has to do much better in order to make sure that there's full compliance with all of these principles that I have just stated, and the Libre Committee is ready to do better when it comes to updating the legislation so that it's fair for those member states which have vulnerable external borders. Greece is the, 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 the ultimate example of this unfairness. Greece is taking much, much, much responsibility to, 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 to save lives, to bring them ashore, and uh, to apply the procedures. We have also noticed the admissibility pattern, the rejection rate, we care about that. That is something which contains lessons to be learned for the work ahead. But I insist to monitor that situation is for the European Commission and its agencies to improve the delivery of the EU response and make sure that there is solidarity with those countries with vulnerable external borders that is our job. That is the Libe Committee's job. And we're ready to do so. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Minister, you have uh, the same to question. reply. Can I reply the same question and then I'll take reply a Reply the first yes? question. And I, I thought I it's intended to both. So I can... Do you want me to add two more questions we have on the web yeah. and you reply to all of them yeah. together? Thank you. From Nikolai Nielsen, EU Observer. When will there be an independent border monitoring mechanism in place? Mm -hmm. And second question, I have from Dimitris Agelidis, mm -hmm. Ephemerida to Sidakton. Uh, a delegation of the Libre Committee witnessed yesterday what seems to be a pushback operation in Samos. Five Somalis were hiding in the woods. The police had no identification numbers and had their faces covered. The guys said they had lost trace, the traces of 19 more people and that they heard gunshots. Is there any news about what happened to the rest of the group of refugees in Samos? Minister, first to you, what actions has the government taken to investigate these cases? Thank you. And to Mr. Anguilar. Can, uh, I, can I finish my question and then you tell Mr. Anguilar so he remembers? Okay. okay. First of all, let me uh, be very clear. European Union member states have an obligation, a sovereign obligation, to protect the external borders of the European Union according to the Schengen Acquis and according to the principle of sovereign rights. The most recent decision from the European Court of Human Rights in a case against Spain upheld that, members, that countries have the right under condition and under specific rules to protect their borders. So the principle that countries do not have borders is not something that the Greek government will agree to. These borders exist, people have passports to travel, and people get visas to travel to countries where it requires visa. So if there are people that think the world should not have borders, this is not the position of the Greek government, and probably is not the position of any government of the European Union. Protecting the border requires adherence to international law. And I couldn't agree more with President Aguilar that member states have to protect the external borders in full respect of fundamental rights of those seeking international protection to the European Union. And Greece does exactly that. And we have welcomed 100,000 people in the last three years in Greece, over a million people in the last seven years, over a million people in the 90s. So Greece is no stranger to migration, is no stranger to having people seeking international protection in our country. Of course, at the European Union level, we very much advocate that Europe needs to have legal pathways to migration and not allow the smugglers to decide who comes to the European Union. 
talking about the situation with Afghanistan. You know Greece recently provided 700 humanitarian visas to provide a safe passage to Greece and asylum to Greece if they choose so to people that are in need of protection. So we are protecting our borders. You refer to an, investi to an investigative journalist piece about uh, allegation to the Greek authorities uh, from an NGO called uh, Lighthouse. I have written to them and have asked them to provide further information, detailed information about the videos and provide witnesses to the authorities so we can properly investigate. They have responded in writing that they will provide no further information other than the one they published in their website. This information has now gone to the Greek Transparency, Independent Transparency Agency for examination. I'm surprised that the authors of this report are not willing to share with the competent authorities, not with me, not with the ministry, the detailed information and the witnesses they claim to have, which will help the authorities to investigate. Now, going to the point about an independent monitoring mechanism, I have to say Greece already operates three independent monitoring mechanisms. We have the national independent authorities that have the uh, jurisdiction to control the performance of the civil servants and government. We have the internal audit of the police, which is being supervised by an attorney general, so it is ju under judicial review and not under administrative review. And of course, we have the judiciary. And the rule of law means exactly that, that the government does not intervene in the process of the judiciary. What I think I don't, is not needed is to create a special mechanism which is not under the judiciary. It is, uh, consists of individuals selected to form an authority. This, I think, it could even be considered to be breaking the rule of law in my mind. Now, finally, talking about the incident in Samos, I was told by the president of Libya that they haven't witnessed any pushback. So probably Mr. Aguilar, this information is wrong, and Mr. Aguilar will reply for himself. But there has been indeed a very peculiar event yesterday in Samos, and I will ask the attorney general to investigate. What apparently happened according to our own information there was an arrival in Samos in the morning of the 3rd of November that was undetected by the Greek authorities. It doesn't mean that we can, are able to see all arrivals. Some go undetected, unfortunately. Some people hidden in the mountains. There was an individual that approached Libya and said he knows where these people is hiding. And apparently one member of the Libya delegation, just one, with the escort of the Greek police, found these people hiding in the mountains. It is extremely peculiar how a local person knew where the arrival has gone. Very peculiar. But if you ask me why people may be hiding, and I'll conclude with that, under the, the current Dublin regulation, countries of first registration bear responsibility for this asylum seeker. This is not always to the benefit of the asylum seeker, who prefers to be in Greece undetected through the same smugglers go to the Western Balkan route and then end up in Central Europe and apply for the first time for asylum in countries like Belgium, Holland, Germany, or Sweden, countries that provide maybe a better benefit environment for him. So people have a big incentive not to be identified to the Greek authorities, so they are not registered, so they can seek asylum to another country. Allowing that will be a breach of our responsibility as Greece under the Dublin regulation. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, on the same incident, uh, Mr. Aguilides continues and addresses a second question on the same incident to Chairman Aguilar. Have you asked the Hellenic Coast Guard for explanations about this case? What specific actions is the Libya Committee going to take about this and other pushback allegations that appear at a rather frantic pace? Well, as to the witnessing of a pushback live, the short answer is no. So no ground for false assumptions. We have been here three days. It would be a false assumption to let the rumor stating that we witnessed an illegal pushback. No, we didn't. But we have for sure stated our mind on the matter in a number of EU resolutions following very intense debate in the plenary of the European Parliament regularly in Strasbourg. I can remind myself and every one of my colleagues making it clear that legal pushbacks 
must not happen in the European Union, have no place under EU law, that every time there is life in peril at sight, the work to be done is to search and rescue, to bring them ashore and care about the procedure ahead in full compliance with EU law. It's not only my case, it is the case of the European Commission for that matter. I can recall Ilva Johansson going public with that principle time and again. So rest assured, we witnessed no illegal pushback. But having said this, it is also a fact that there is an illicit business model of criminal nature, illicit trafficking of human beings, and exploitation in every possible way, including the most cruel and humane sexual exploitation of women and children. And they have, of course, accomplices within the European Union. There is the general assumption that when we talk about illicit trafficking of human beings, we're talking about some external forces taking place somewhere else. No, they have connections within the European Union. And the criminal deed would not be completed if not because of those who are engaged in criminal activities within the European Union. So yes, we have to crack down on the illicit trafficking of human beings. But by the same token, we have to emphasize regular and legal pathways to make it to Europe. But because you know what? 95% of those who are granted asylum status or some sort of international humanitarian protection within the territory of the European Union, that means within the territory of the member states of the European Union, did make it here irregularly. You know why? Because they were not given the chance to make it regularly. That is why they exposed themselves to the illicit trafficking by the mafia. That is why they exposed themselves to those terrible violations of the most basic fundamental rights. That is why they took the risk of their lives and their loved ones. That is why they took a boat with a terrible nightmare ahead at the risk of perishing and losing their lives. And you know what? They paid for it. They paid for that torture. They paid for that nightmare, an incredible amount of money that will indebt them and their families for life. Why they do, why, why, why the hell would, would, would they do that if they were given the chance to make it regularly? But they were not. So we have to open up legal pathways. Legal migration is needed in the European Union. And there has to be a legal pathway for those in need to make it to Europe regularly. Humanitarian corridors, humanitarian visas, safe pathways to make it to Europe, to bring them, particularly from Afghanistan, which is the number one priority at a humanitarian dimension by now, and let them come to Europe without risking their lives or perishing in the attempt to come ashore. That is also a principle that has been stated in a number of resolutions of the European Parliament. I wanted to share it with you. Is there any question? I have no other question, so thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your attendance and for your questions.